There we go, and we are live for some Monday night Labor Day action on Cherry League. My name is Terra Spaz, the map is Cursed Hollow, and today we've got a uh, placement bout between Giant Killer on the blue team and the usual suspects on the red. Uh, Giant Killer banning out Zagara for their opening moves. Zagara definitely a, a strong hero with a lot of versatility, a lot of... Uh, big map presence potential, uh, especially with Nidus Network. I got destroyed by two Zagaras today on this very same map, so uh, definitely a prudent ban, uh, as well as the usual suspects banning Abathur. Um, Abathur, again, has the uh, same kind of deal as Zagara, can have a lot of uh, presence in a lane away from the fight, so can that extra experience to get a lead. And That seems to be the, the priority for... Um, both teams so far with the Abathur and Zagara bands picking up Falstad to be everywhere you want to be. Uh, the usual suspects are prioritizing just sheer raw damage uh, out of the gates with ETC uh, backing her up and uh, trying to trying to run defense for. Her. So a bit of a bit of a different start for both teams. Uh, Giant Killer picking the um, picking Falstad, who I think has Giant Killer as a talent, not. Uh, not a huge Falstad player myself, but I, I would uh, be surprised if he didn't have it. Uh, certainly got a target to go for on uh, on the side of ETC so far. So uh, both teams got through the the opening bit fairly uh, fairly quickly. Nothing uh, nothing too surprising uh, to begin. Now they have to begin thinking. Uh, Giant Killer are picking up Morales as their uh, second pick, backed up by Nazebo. Um, so uh, already kind of filling in a lot of the roles on the team, can uh, backfill with their last two picks into uh, whatever they see coming out from the usual suspects. But they got a couple sources of damage uh, and what is almost certainly the most priority target in the entire game in the form of Morales. So uh, part of this game may just come down to how well can Giant Killer... Uh, Put walls and barriers and any kind of any kind of defenses to help keep Morales alive. That's gonna that's gonna be driving a lot of their efforts, I would imagine. The usual suspects trying to figure out who to take away from that team. Uh, remembering again that they will get uh, f their third and fourth picks following this, so they uh, have a lot of freedom in who they ban. They have uh, got two picks after the bannings to remove players from the or remove characters from the pool. But Arthas is going to be the takeaway. Uh, Giant Killer still missing a a uh, totally devoted warrior, so Arthas uh, a good uh, good removal tool for that. Um, Giant Killer trying to figure out who to take away. Usual Suspects has a great source of damage and a great tank uh, showing already, uh, and so kind of unsurprisingly, they decide to remove a support from from the Usual Suspects lineup. Um, I haven't seen a whole bunch of play from Uther as of late. I think his, uh, I think Blizzard's been trying to take away from the piano style of having a billion buttons for Uther. So he's, I think he's kind of fallen out of, uh, out of favor here lately. But um, who knows? It's a new season, and everything, as we know, may change on the patch next Tuesday. So um, this, if you're listening to this in the future, this this may be uh, old and completely untrue news. Usual suspects digging deep into their stoppage time, under 30 seconds to go. Um, trying to figure out who they want to augment their team. This is going to be probably the most crucial round of the draft for them. They're going to just throw in another injection of damage into their team in the form of Greymane and Rhaegar there to back him up. So uh, definitely best buddies forever in, uh, in the form of uh, Mr. Oregon and Mr. Gladiator. Uh... And that's and that's kind of the uh, the approach they may have needed to get. They need to get some uh, some heroes that can jump past that front line, which uh, is currently made up of Diablo uh, and presumably Giant Killer's fifth pick. But we'll we'll see what that's going to be. But I like I like the Gray Main pick and I like the Regar pick from from Usual Suspect. It kind of gives you this complete balanced breakfast of uh, of just raw violence, which uh, is something they're going to need. Uh, Giant Killer oodles of time to figure out how to, to round out this team. They've got uh, all the all the stock rolls of Heroes of the Storm wreck uh, filled, so they can 
kind of adjust their team to whatever they need. Maybe they want uh, some additional force in the front line. Maybe they want some more damage shooting from the back. Uh, kind of depends on how they want to shape these fights to go. Taking a lot of time to, to figure this one out. Want to make sure they're not overlooking something. Uh, and it is, and they're just going to keep building that wall. Johanna Diablo going to be picks four and five. I'm two of the, the highest health pool characters in the game and fairly difficult to kill if they're uh, maintained properly, if they don't uh, get too crazy in uh, in situations. But Greyman and Lee Ming certainly have enough damage to, to challenge that, so this could, uh, could be a fairly interesting bout. Usual suspects on their final pick, just under 25 seconds to go. They've got... Um, I'd be surprised if they picked additional damage here. That's uh, there's a lot of room for some some really wonky stuff, and it's going to be the double support in the form of Rhaegar Brightwing. Didn't see that coming, but that's uh, certainly a powerful tool if they need to turn off one very dangerous hero. Brightwing excels at that, so that's uh, going to be that's going to be it, and that's going to be our draft. So we'll hop into the game here in just a moment. Yeah, uh, doodle with some things. And here we go. Turn our sound on. And we are loaded into Cursed Hollow, week one, game one. This is, like, this is the opening bout of season three of Chair League, so happy to see both teams uh, geared up and ready for action. On the side of Giant Killer, we've got Alzadera on Johanna, Baran Flakes on Falstad, Scuzzy Muff on Nazebo, Soder on Lieutenant Morales, and Dead Turtle on Diablo. And on the side of Usual Suspects, we've got Lorenzo on Greymane, DBS Smiley on ETC, Kahlo on Lee Ming, Archimedes on Rhaegar, and Lorama on Brightwing. Gates are down, teams are headed for imminent destiny violence, extreme battle clash things in the middle of the map. Um, and actually, Giant Killer's gonna find nobody there to join the party. So a bit of a sneaky move from usual suspects going away from the uh, uh, out of the gate brawl in the middle of the fight trying to figure out how to get a more favorable position. But here comes the engagement. A lot of damage pouring down on Grey Main, but he's going to get away nice and safely. Giant Killer opting to stay together as one big ball for now. Uh, usual suspects already doing well. Uh, soaking XB with Brightwing in the top and Leeming in the bottom lane. Uh, uncontested for the moment. 
Um, so that might put usual suspects with a, a small positional advantage um, in the first minute or so, but that should uh, get eroded fairly quickly here. Nazebo on Giant Killer, uh, staying fairly close to his gates. Usual suspects doing a doing a job trying to catch him out. He's uh, might be walking into trouble here, but he's in uh, in a bit of a safe spot so far. Uh, the trigger is pulled, ETC and Greyman come down. Nazebo caught out by his own wall and a quick takedown on the side of Usual Suspects. Uh, getting a quick early first kill. And, uh, a good start overall. Regar trying to hold his own until he can get reinforcements back in the mid lane. Meanwhile in the top, uh, Falstad and Brightwing just doing a, a casual, playful, sort of a nonchalant dance in, uh, in the top. Just killing minions, saying hi to each other. Uh, mids where the action seems like it's going to remain for a minute. Uh, Rhaegar uh, watching again by himself. We'll see if uh, Falstad gets the memo from his teammates that folks are leaving. And so far he seems extended kind of far forward, but it looks like now he's uh, sensing that something might be off, that uh, communication from uh, Nazebo might be alerting him to stuff. Looks like he's calling for help there. Here comes the, the train again, and a nice, uh, just an amazing gank squad from ETC uh, Greymane just... Setting up in those bushes, waiting for the right time to strike, and I really like what usual suspects are doing with those two heroes. Uh, first tribute should be spawning uh, fairly imminently. We see uh, giant killers going to pick up a camp of their own, uh, as well as usual suspects going to try and put some work on the bruisers. Both teams uh, kind of late to this party, though, as the tribute's going to spawn in about five seconds, and both teams will have uh, a substantial delay before all. Excuse me, before all the all the heroes are in play. Regar starts uh, trying to channel it, but uh, plenty of interrupts from the side of Zebo and uh, even Morales to just delay that. Uh, Giant Killer has the stronger force uh, here at the moment. Uh, Brightwing just soaking up every bit of XP in the top uh, uh, as long as she can. I expect her to warp in fairly soon. A lot of damage coming out on the Zebo, but just immediately canceled out by Morales, who's got a full mana bar. Um, so if giant killers are careful, they should be able to make this fight uh, go quite a long ways. ETC charging in there, surrounded by giant killers. His health pool is evaporating, and there goes the damage on Morales. She barely escapes with a sliver of health. Uh, it's going to be a few seconds before she's back in uh, fighting condition to get back to it, and that may be long enough for usual suspects to pick this up. And it looks like Greymane will secure the first tribute. Uh, fighting's not over yet, though, as Diablo goes directly ham against Rhaegar, who's gonna uh, escape with his life. And uh, so, so far, during all that, uh, the giant killer's uh, walls fell in mid. Uh, they do have a siege camp pushing top that uh, should take out the wall uh, for uh, usual suspects in the, in the top lane. Usual suspects uh, level in a talent tier ahead. Uh, that advantage should be gone by the time the next tribute spawns. Um, but it definitely means giant killers need to play fairly cautious uh, for the moment. And I take that back. They may not hit level 7 before this tribute. Um, so they may be at a, at a fairly notable disadvantage here. Favorable spawn location for them, though. ETC is probably going to be a little late to the fight. Uh, looks like... Giant killers have everybody here to the party, so they may, um, they could scoop this up quickly. They may be in position to get it. Uh, Morales trying to get the channel. Uh, Leaming just out of range for the interrupt, and it looks like uh, Johanna is going to group everybody up to save it, so uh, Giant Killer will secure their first tribute. Meanwhile, Brightwing happily soaking up uh, XP and uh, draining the ammo from the towers at the top. They're uh, not long for this world. Still looking to hit level 7 uh, for Giant Killers. They're uh, falling a little bit behind on the XP count, missing on that top uh, top XP soak, but it looks like Falstad's there to rectify that situation. Both teams kind of spread out a little bit all over the place. Uh, tribute's going to be on usual suspect side of the map at this point, but it looks like once again Giant Killers are going to be the first ones to the party. Uh, Li Ming doing a nice job picking up this siege camp. It's going to hopefully do some work in bottom lane if this fight uh, goes longer than expected. 
little bit of party bush, catches Falstad unawares. His health pool evaporates, and he is gone for this world for about 20 seconds. Fighting keeps going. Uh, Greymane pursuing uh, Morales and Johanna doing a nice job keeping her alive. Uh, Nazebo's uh, Vermin Brigade uh, is going to delay Li Ming, but I don't think it's going to be enough to stop her. She will pick up tribute number two for the usual suspects. Uh, Johanna may have bitten off more than she could chew here as the entire complement of usual suspects chase her back to her fort. But uh, all's well in the world. Giant Killer still looking for their first takedown of the match. Takedown score is 3-0 in favor of usual suspects. Um, and that... I'm uh, not sure how that's going to scale towards the late game. Got some uh, boss collection going on on the side of Usual Suspects. They uh, get the tempo advantage getting their boss in top lane, which is going to leave Giant Killers on a back foot, and they've got some really tough choices to make. They can either respond to this boss uh, or get the next tribute, which should be spawning imminently, but Usual Suspects are... Uh, they have their heroics, they're challenging the boss at bottom, and, and Giant Killers just have way too many problems to solve right now. This is not an enviable position. They're almost done taking out the top boss, but we're going to have another one to deal with in the bottom just here in moments. Uh, let's see if Nazebo can be a hero, but it looks like he uh, saw danger and just uh, ran away. Let's see if Giant Killer can quickly take this tribute. Usual suspects don't need to claim it, they just need to delay it long enough to let that boss do work, but that... Uh, doesn't seem like it quite worked out. Diablo uh, getting a little bit flanked here, wedged in place from uh, from Rhaegar, but it looks like he's going to get away. Bit of a skirmish coming up here in top, and I think this is what usual suspects really want, because uh, right now it's just Nazebo dealing with that boss in bottom lane. Sounds like he's gotten through a fort. His health pool is fairly low. It's not going to get a lot more than that. So all in all, uh, things went fairly favorably for Giant Killer on a map where uh, losing two bosses can be a big, big problem. Heroics on the line. One of the big questions in any map with Falstad is which heroic do you get? Do you get the Great Big Gust or do you get the Giant Lightning Bolt? It looks like that's uh, still going to be in contention here for a little bit. Uh, Gust will be the pickup, so we'll have to see some acrobatic aeronautic tricks from Falstad. I have words, and I use good words. Alright, so big tribute for both teams. Both teams at uh, two tributes. Next tribute will definitely secure a curse for someone. Uh, both teams sort of filing in. Once again, Giant Killers, the first ones to the party. Uh, we'll see if they can scoop it up. Uh, Nazebo looks like he's going to be trailing a little bit. So is ETC, so... Uh, fairly even presence from both teams. We'll see how this goes. Usual suspects do have a bruiser camp pushing in mid, so the longer this goes, the better for them. A lot of blows being exchanged. Uh, Stimpak dropped on Johanna. Not the not the most uh, damaging target you could apply that to, but uh, the speed bonus is definitely uh, helpful and wanted. Uh, ETC coming in, thinking about moshing, decides not to. A fairly decent apocalypse from uh, Diablo. Still no takedowns yet. Giant Killer's health falling really low. Johanna pops her trait. That's going to be the only thing keeping her alive right now. Morales in dire straits as Grey Mane's in hot pursuit. Wills get the takedown. And uh, Falstad's far behind. So two takedowns against Giant Killer. Diablo's likely to be the third. Uh, Johanna and Nazebo trying to, to save it. But uh, it's going to be all they can do to keep themselves alive. Uh, Lei Ming channeling the tribute right now. Curse falls against Giant Killer. The, the waves of usual suspects start closing in. And Johanna and Nazebo still on the run. And I'm not sure that Johanna's going to make it. Nazebo's in a tough spot too. That, that, oh, that slide from ETC, almost enough to take him down. He's going to barely escape with his life. So this is what usual suspects wanted there. They immediately jumped into the lane that had already been pushed in for that boss. If they can get a keep here, they're going to have catapults for the rest of the map. And that's going to be just a, a tremendous advantage. It's going to always keep Giants Killer's attentions on this. They can't ever really focus away. But they're looking to do maybe more than just get a keep here. They're uh, quite firmly invested into into Giant Killer's base. Rhaegar's health drops pretty low. But uh, Giant Killer still can't quite get that takedown they were hoping for. 
And uh, Hell itself was closing in on all sides as they're starting to get some damage on the mid keep or the mid keep lane. Uh, top is also starting to fall fairly well. Somewhere in all that, Nazebo fell, and usual suspects have no intentions of stopping as they pick up a second keep of their own. Oh, an incredibly valuable curse from Usual Suspect is going to net is going to leave Giant Killers with one building on the map. This top keep, they're they're a lone bastion of defense against uh, the ever increasing waves of Usual Suspects. So three levels down, about to face down level 16 talents from the side of Usual Suspects. They're gonna. It's almost like they need to rely on a mistake from Usual Suspects. They gotta get a pick. They gotta. They gotta start straggling out these deaths so they can catch um, catch back up on this. But usual suspects have no intention of giving them a second to catch their breath. No matter at the end of every engagement, they're, they're turning around. They're giving some other problem for Giant Killer to solve. And again, with two lanes with catapults, Giant Killer's not gonna have a whole lot of time to to devote to just hunting them out, trying to gain Mac objectives. They're gonna be on defense forever. Uh, and this is uh, oh, this could be a good fight here. Uh, usual suspects coming in against giant killers with their own siege. Giant killers are going to secure the siege camp. And we'll see how this shakes out. A gust to to try and get everyone away. A big ancestral going down uh, for Lorenzo. Greymane is going to stay alive. Uh, ETC's mosh pit's only going to catch one to two ish people. Uh, Falstad is going to fall down, so it's four v five against giant killers. Uh, Dead turtle's going to fall as well, and. And Giant Killers are in full retreat. Johanna is a sliver of health. He's, she's going to fall down. Morales grenades herself to safety. So another 3 nothing takedown advantage for usual suspects. And they are dominating this map. Next tribute should be spawning fairly soon. A curse on the side of Giant Killers. The lanes pushed as far as they are aren't going to do a tremendous amount of damage, but it may give them enough time to, to catch their breath, to focus on a map objective, maybe take their own boss. Um, so it looks like it's going to be later than I thought. So, uh, usual suspects are going to secure their first boss. Or, I'm sorry, their, their third boss in the map. Uh, and time it very well against the uh, against this tribute. Giant Killers coming in from the southwest, trying to find a line in. ETC shutting that down real hard, and Brightwing's going to easily secure the tribute. No real damage to speak of, but uh, Boss coming in on the top lane. Uh, it may not take out this uh, this keep, but it's certainly going to put a huge hurting on it. And I mean, Giant Killer has no choice but to respond to it, which is going to give usual suspect all the time they need to secure their fourth boss of the match uh, on Giant Killer's side of the map. Surely they know that's what's coming. You can see them heading there directly now, but it's not going to be it's not quite going to be enough as as boss is going to roll, and this has a beeline to the core. The Giant Killer is going to have to play defense on this as well, and this may if. If they can't get some sort of favorable engagement here, this may be the last team fight of the match. ETC gets a nice mosh pit, doesn't see any takedowns, but drops a lot of the health pool on Giant Killers. Morales goes down, Diablo goes down, 3v5 against Giant Killers. They're not done yet, they get such low health, but Ancestral Healing bringing Greymane back from the brink. And the punishment just keeps coming on from Usual Suspect. Boss wailing on the core. Uh, Giant Killer is just desperately trying to find any sort of inroad into saving this core, but there's just so much damage coming out of Usual Suspect that that's almost certainly going to be the game. So just non-stop action from from uh, both teams on that, but uh, Usual Suspect's got the those first early takedowns. They got a pick in the bottom lane. Uh, they got that pick in the top. And they, they, they grab that early advantage and just never let go of it. Um, and that kind of shows you what the, the power of a, a fifth tribute curse can do. It, no one likes surrendering tributes, but you can do a lot more damage uh, after the fifth tribute than the third one if you get that curse. Because you'll, you'll definitely have heroics by that point. Uh, boss has probably pushed a lane in fairly far. Um, 
And so it opens up a lot of opportunities that you might not have uh, after the third tribute. But uh, strong showing from both teams. Uh, usual suspects seem to have the upper hand for uh, some of those engagements. They had fabulous rotations from mid to bottom. Uh, ETC and Greymane doing just doing a lot of work there uh, and just orchestrating you know, the, the engagements that they wanted to have. So um, excellent start to Season 3 of Chair League. Uh, wonderful match from both teams, but there is only one W. And today that W is going to go to the usual suspects. Um, so until next time, my name's been Terrace Baz, and if you see Kaiser Soze, tell them that I'll see him in the Nexus. Take care.